the coalition at this time had the opportunity to attack Daesh when they were in their road to arrive to Palmyra. This equation, we, we still don't have the answer. I mean, Abraham Path. I'm Anissa Mehdi, Executive Director of the Abraham Path Initiative. The Abraham Path is a route toward cross-cultural communication, heritage preservation, and economic growth, all through walking tourism and online programming. We envision a time when the region we call the Middle East, geographic Southwest Asia, may be known worldwide for its hospitable peoples, and spectacular landscapes. And that eventually when you think of the Middle East, what will come to mind will be, gosh, this is a great place to connect, meet other people, walk, talk, listen, and learn, and of course to eat. Now you can do the eating right away, but the other things are part of our vision and we are moving in step-by-step step toward that goal. We work mostly in villages and rural communities building walking trails, training local guides, engaging homestay hosts, and then encouraging you to try it out. Since 2007, API has catalyzed 1,200 miles of trails. More than 80,000 people have walked segments of those trails in Jordan, Palestine, Sinai, and Turkey. Right now, we're developing a long-distance hiking trail in the Kurdistan region of Iraq, 120 miles. Now that caught the attention of the New York Times. We all know that the Middle East is a complex region. There are times and places to walk there, and there are times and places not to walk. Palmyra, Palmyra is one of them. Joining us today from Barcelona, Spain is Dr. Isper Sabrin. Isper Sabrin is an archeologist, he's from Syria, and he specializes in cultural heritage management. Dr. Sabrin will share his expertise in both built heritage, antiquities, and about the people who live in the city of Palmyra itself. Welcome, Isper. Que tal Barcelona? Hi, Anissa. Thank you very much for your introduction and the presentation. Uh, so yeah, I am really happy to have this opportunity to participate with Abraham Path and giving this talk about Palmyra and the Palmyrines. You told me that uh, it's a national holiday today in Spain. Yeah, <laughs> actually. And what happens it, during national holidays in Spain? Today it's uh, San Juan Day, so it's a big day in Spain. So we expect that a few maybe uh, uh, minutes later, it will be that kind of uh, uh, artificial fires, you know, so just to be prepared. <laughs> right, in case there are fireworks behind mm -hmm. you when we're listening to the conversation. Very good. We'll keep that in mind. You specialize in cultural heritage management. I'm, I'm curious to know what attracted you to the field of archaeology and cultural heritage. Isabel. Yeah, actually, I mean, um, Syria, it's itself, you know, and as they say, a lot of uh, big historians and big archaeologists is an open museum in the, in the air. So, uh, and always, I I was interested on on on, on archaeology and uh, 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 discovering as well the uh, uh, amazing archaeological sites that we have in Syria. Uh, I remember when I was like uh, at school, I was always uh, the guide uh, for our uh, trips uh, at school. So uh, so I saw like, yeah, this it will be really very nice if I will dedicate my future to this. And I remember when I was 12 years old, I uh, went to Palmyra uh, with my school. At this time, you know, I started really to be uh, uh, considering that my future it will be an uh, archaeologist and uh, working uh, uh, on uh, excavations and uh, discovering. But unfortunately, what happened in Syria and the war 
uh, brought me to another uh, uh, field, which is is a field on uh, heritage protection during conflicts. So I, I, I did a lot of excavations in Syria. Besides that, I uh, uh, worked a few years before the conflict as a, a, a national tourist guide. So I used till just one month before the conflict to guide uh, tours in all uh, around the places in Syria, Palmyra, uh, 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 the Euphrates, uh, the coast, Grand Chevalier, everywhere in Syria. And it was like, you know, amazing to see Syria just a few years before the conflict became one of the most important uh, cultural destinations in the Middle East. And the conflict, so, when, you, when you speak of the conflict, you're talking now about the Syrian civil war. Yeah, actually, I am talking about that. I mean, uh, we uh, uh, where we were. Uh, I mean, I mean, I wasn't here till 2011, and we didn't at all expect it that you know we will have uh, uh, what we are having. You know, so Syria it was really very uh, uh, secure country. Uh, also, uh, the security in the country was one of the uh, attractions that the, the, the people came to visit uh, Syria. Um, everything changed just in one day to the other. I mean, just, I mean, uh, 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 one month before the uh, conflict started, I was guiding tours uh, for uh, foreigners in Syria, you know, so just to change your mind that, you know, you were with tourists and peace time, you know, uh, 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 and then suddenly everything changed. So it was so hard to accept the uh, reality of uh, uh, what happened. It's hard to imagine. It's hard to imagine. The, the statistics say that 150,000 people were visiting Palmyra and at a given year up until, up until the war started. And Palmyra has UNESCO um, heritage site status too from 1980. And uh, as you said, um, a safe place to visit. I was lucky to, to visit Damascus in 2009. And it uh, must be very hard for you now living sort of an exile, right, in Spain. Yeah, actually, I mean, uh, uh, it was really like, you know, um, amazing, you know, to just uh, 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 finishing my studies and just starting to work as an archaeologist and as uh, tourist guide. So um, Syria, really, I mean, it, it, in just a few uh, months, it changed a lot. And uh, uh, everyone who came to Syria wanted to come to visit Balmira. And plus, Balmira visit is a unique visit, you know, it's, 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 it's like uh, a very uh, even a spiritual uh, uh, visit you can see like you know you are in touch with the ruins you are in touch with the desert you are in touch with the nature so uh, uh, i remember uh, when i was with a tourist in palmyra like everyone was like you know uh, 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 very happy very uh, uh, satisfied it was amazing experience for the people who came to visit you know I'm sure that it was. What a, an amazing place it is to have been created. People have been living there for 3,000 years and chose that spot because it was an oasis in the Syrian desert. You mentioned the nature that's there. But since you left Syria, you've been busy trying to help the situation. You created an organization called Heritage for Peace. We're going to put the links to these organizations that we mentioned in our chat for you in our audience, Heritage for Peace, and then Palmarine Voices, both of these. Uh, well, you tell us what these organizations aim to do. Yeah, actually, I mean, uh, um, observing the conflict and being on exile, we needed to act. I mean, we cannot really stay without doing anything and seeing and watching the destruction of Syria, the destruction of, of uh, our heritage. So it was a, a huge need, you know, to act. And it was really not easy, you know, just to start from uh, uh, zero and, you know, to build an NGO and then, you know, to uh, wait and to get the funding. And it was really not, not easy. Heritage for Peace, you know, is funded now since 10 years in Spain. 
And since then, we are uh, active on doing projects on the production of cultural heritage. I mean, we started with Syria, but with the time, we extend our work to do uh, more projects in other countries like uh, uh, Yemen, Iraq, Libya, uh, and recently we were uh, 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 busy with, with Ukraine. Um, so, Balmerian Voices is an initiative uh, 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 from here to Short Peace, was created as well in uh, 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 collaboration with the co founder, is also uh, a Syrian guy with me, Hassan Ali. He's uh, also with, uh, with us now on, on, on the presentation. Uh, and, uh, and, and actually, Hassan. Uh, he's from Palmyra. He was living in Palmyra. He's archaeologist. So uh, with Hassan, we decided to uh, start these uh, initiatives. Palmyrian Voices initiative is to make the voices from Palmyra heard. And the co-founder of this initiative is the archaeologist Hassan Ali from uh, uh, from Syria. He's now based in Turkey. And he, since when he flee from Palmyra in 2015, he was able to create uh, a lot of uh, work within the Palmyrian community uh, uh, in, 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 in Turkey and uh, in different places as well in the diaspora uh, countries. So the need of Palmyrian voices was to raise the voice of the Palmyrian. Palmyrian always in the last years, especially when ISIS was in, in Palmyra and the destruction of Palmyra, all the world was talking about the destruction of the Palmyra as ancient city and the need to give a voice and also to show the uh, tragedy of the Palmyrene voices was the reason of the creation of uh, this project. Heritage for Peace is an international group of heritage workers who believe that cultural heritage production is a common ground for dialogue uh, and a tool uh, to build peace. Why we start this NGO? The conflict started in 2011 and there is no preparation. From the beginning, the role of the international organization was very, very modest. Destruction of cultural heritage took place from the beginning of the conflict, but there is no intervention from the international communities, especially the you know, uh, uh, big organization like UNESCO and its partners who work on heritage. At this time as well, the uh, uh, heritage authorities in Syria, especially the TGM, was uh, not able to act in different places in Syria. And also the conflicts in the Middle East, we have a big problem, which is uh, non-state actors. What so I mean, armed uh, uh, non-state actors. So in Syria and in uh, Yemen and even in Libya, several areas where the uh, 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 conflict is taking place is uh, controlled by those armed uh, non-state actors. And this is really was a big problem because the international law is not applicable to these areas. So the, there was really a need to support people who are in these uh, places, and especially the uh, civil society. From our starting, we set up several objectives that we are working, and uh, this also includes our work for Palmyra, our work uh, to protect cultural heritage of all forms in Syria and also in other conflicts uh, area. And we recognize that heritage is valued as equal in importance. We promote understanding across diverse uh, communities of the Commonwealth value of heritage, provide scientific and instructive material to develop heritage skills for young scholars, uh, liaise between local heritage workers operating during a violent conflict and the international heritage community, and to provide support. In all our actions, we try to connect heritage production to this building. So why we came to Palmyra? All the Syrians, we are connected to Palmyra as this symbol of our identity. I mean, as a school, we learn about Palmyra, we learn about its importance as a station on the uh, Silk Road. We learn in our school about Zenobia and how Zenobia, the queen of Palmyra, uh, fighted uh, Rome. Palmyra became like a, a very big kingdom during the uh, first centuries AD. Before the conflict, I, I used to work as a national tourist guide and as archaeologist. 
I, I used to work uh, with all kinds of nationalities to guide them in, in Palmyra. Spanish, Italian, uh, English, uh, Danish. And it was like amazing to see how the people just discover Palmyra. The architecture of Palmyra is unique because it's uh, uh, Roman architecture, but also with Oriental influ uh, influence. Uh, Palmyra at this time, I mean, before the, its destruction, as we see here, for example, in this photo, with, uh, where are the tourists? This is the Temple of Pal. The Temple of Pal, the Temple of Pal Shamin, Valley of, uh, uh, of the Death, the Market, uh, the Theater. This is an amazing photo about uh, from the valley of uh, the death. So you can uh, see several tombs and here the castle of Palmyra in the top of this hill. Besides that, not just because of the buildings, because of its intangible heritage, the people who are living in Palmyra, they are living in oasis. They also contribute to the identity of the site and identity of the people of Palmyra. All of these photos are from the oasis. And uh, this dish here you see in the photo is one of the main dish in Palmyra called mansaf, which is also known in other countries. Here we are not going to talk about in details about the archaeological sites. We are going to talk about the people. And this is objective of uh, the work that we are doing in Palmyra. We created these initiatives because there is a need to work and to show and to raise the voices of the Palmyrin. Because everyone was talking about the destruction of the site as an archaeological site, but nobody was talking about the people. Palmyra, till 2011, had 80,000 people. 80,000 people. And because of the conflict, almost like 95% of the Palmyrin are displaced or are refugees. So, uh, all of those people say suffered a lot, especially when Daesh uh, uh, arrived to Palmyra in 2015. So uh, in 2015, the majority of uh, Palmyrians, they flee to another countries and also inside Syria. Uh, and one of those people is uh, Hassan, who is a co-founder of Palmyrian Voices with me and who suffered as well uh, Daesh and the consequence of the occupation of Daesh in, in Palmyra. But again, I mean, I remember when I was a tourist guide in Palmyra, I always was able to observe how the people, they really didn't get uh, the support as they need, uh, or, or they didn't get any attention, even they are living in impressive site like Palmyra. So tourism and the management of the site was really not good. No management plan where the uh, local people, they were engaged with the site. Uh, tourism uh, business in, in, in Palmyra was just controlled by a few people. So Palmyra with its capacity and as an amazing cultural site could get a lot of benefits of all uh, the people in Palmyra. But I remember as well, there were tensions uh, between local people and the authorities. I was with a tourist and when I am on the bus and some people, they come to sell their uh, handicrafts, so they were uh, treated badly. Handicrafts, they were not really organized. There were some several uh, shops, but it was really those shops were just in a few places. So the management plan of the site and the engagement of the local communities with the site, it was really not good. So when Daesh arrived to Palmyra in 2015, we were really very, very worried. And I remember just two days uh, or three days before Daj arrived, I had a call with the director of the Palmyra, Mr. Walid Assad. And they started just a few days to evacuate the museums, but it was very fast. And we still have a big questions that we don't know. I mean, at this time, uh, United States and also uh, the coalition they were in, 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 in Syria and they were uh, they started the war against Daesh. But we ask ourselves how Daesh came from Raqqa, which is uh, like around 300 kilometers from Palmyra, and arrived like uh, with cars in open air. I mean, the coalition at this time had the opportunity to uh, just attack 
uh, uh, Daesh when they were in their road to arrive to Palmyra, this equation, it's really something we we still don't have the answer. I mean, uh, how Daesh could arrive to Palmyra in this way? And I remember at this time, a lot of uh, coverage. So all the international uh, media uh, were talking about Palmyra. Daesh used Palmyra to promote themselves. They show how this is affecting their publicity, their image, from May 2015 till August 2015. Three months Daesh was there and there were no destruction. The first uh, destruction of Palmyra, August 2015. They really used this to promote themselves. They did good videos. They did, I mean, uh, the same thing they did with, uh, as well, in, in Mosul Museum and uh, other places. So what I want to say here, I mean, we really gave Daesh at this time, I mean, the uh, attention that uh, was in the media, motivated Daesh to do more at destruction. They also looted the Museum of Palmyra. A lot of small objects, they were looted. Even, I mean, the people in Palmyra and the heritage authorities, they tried to do their best in order to protect the museum. But unfortunately, they couldn't evacuate all the collection. And we know that Daesh also used objects and uh, illicit traffic as well to finance their war. All of us, we know this sad story about the Syrian archaeologist who was killed by Daesh, Khal Assad. Uh, I mean, this story became hero uh, for Palmyra and also for all the Syrians that Khal Assad was kidnapped by uh, Daesh and he gave his life to uh, uh, protect the site. It's uh, very sad to see how how uh, they killed him. But in the end, I mean, this was a lesson that, you know, People uh, uh, like uh, Khalid Assad played an important role to uh, uh, protect and to uh, discover this site. During all his, his life, he was the main archaeologist and uh, all the world now know him. Even they give him prizes about his amazing work. I mean, he refused to give Daesh uh, information about the uh, artifacts because they wanted to loot and this is one of the main uh, 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 reasons that he was killed by, by them. I don't want to talk a lot about Daesh. It's very sad, uh, very uh, terrific what they did. Uh, and it will be in the memory of all the world. You know, the destruction of Palmyra is a symbol of the destruction of the culture. I am now published a publication about the management of Syrian archaeological uh, heritage before and during the Syrian conflict, in which I talk about all of these problems of management of the sites, not just Palmyra, I am talking about all Syria, but also I am analyzing the management of the archaeological heritage before the conflict. Destruction of Palmyra lead to an international autocracy of social media frenzy. And this is the reason that we wanted to create this initiative. With Hassan, we said we should do something to raise the voices of Palmyra. Everyone talking about Palmyra, but the people of Palmyra are outside and nobody gives them a voice. So our aim in the creation of this initiative was to give a voice to the Palmyrene people and to support them. We are a civil society initiative, so we are not affiliated to any political uh, organization, some of our objectives. So to convey the uh, voice of the Palmyrean people to the international community to preserve the memory of Palmyrean people along with their cultural and natural heritage to provide a safe road of the return of the Palmyrean people to Palmyra to preserve the link between Palmyrean people wherever uh, they are to help provide job opportunities for Palmyrene people in the diaspora, to present the voices of the Palmyrene people in the restructuring of Palmyra, where they will be able to join the uh, discussion also about the reconstruction. Still, really, the initiative needs a lot of support. And we are very grateful to the support of Alif Organization. Alif Organization funded Palmyrene Voices in the beginning. And with this support, we were able to create 
uh, like different projects within the initiative. One of the first projects that we, we worked with in Turkey, we needed to map where are the people from Palmyra and Zia diaspora. Because in order to do anything for with the people and for the people, we need to know where are those people and who they are. A lot of Palmyrians, they flee to Turkey, to Jordan, to uh, refugee camps as well in northwest Syria. So with Hassan and the, uh, a team of uh, several Palmyrians, we uh, did a survey in which we counted uh, the number of the Palmyrians in, in Turkey through a, a personal connection, through the families in Palmyra who are in Turkey. We uh, create uh, this interactive map. So in the end, we arrived to get like 1,500 uh, families. So in total, around 8,000 uh, people from Palmyra are now uh, refugees in Turkey. So this is our first action in order to understand where are the people. And this also, we are now continuing and uh, trying to prepare a new project in order as well to map where are the Palmyrene in Jordan, also inside Syria and other places. Another project we, we did within uh, this initiative was to support diaspora artisans from Palmyra. As we are connected to the community in Palmyra, we identified several handicrafts, which are the handicrafts that are really representing the Palmyrene identity. The idea of this was to give them some funding in which they continue to do this work because of the displacement and because of lack of of financial uh, support, they couldn't do that. And all of these handicrafts, they were in a danger to be lost. After that, we created a digital shop for them. All of these objects, they represent Palmyra. I mean, even for example, this spread, a symbol of the Palmyrene natural heritage. We are now uh, uh, working as well to prepare a project in altar to train a new generation to produce these handicrafts as well. We want to extend now our work uh, uh, to other places, not just in Turkey, to Jordan, and the refugee camps as well in northwest Syria, where there are Palmyrenes. Palmyra as well is known because of a, a kind of unique ship, which is our Awasi ship in, in the Syrian desert. So now this is also very important for the intangible heritage for Palmyra. Uh, and for the people. So we are now trying to understand all the documentation of this intangible heritage. We will prepare a community-based project in order to document all of this process of using handicrafts as well, which are related to this ship in Palmyra. As I said, we are working now to prepare uh, actions for Palmyrian voices in Jordan and in refugee camps. So also we want to do several workshops and uh, educational program for Syrian refugees, especially the Syrian refugee children who flee and left Syria uh, since long time and they need to know more about Syria. And we, we, we hope that through this program, we will give them uh, more self-esteem about that. So Syria is not the destroyed country, not the country in conflict, it's a country which also uh, has a lot of nice things like, you know, the ruins, and we are now trying to uh, build all, all of these uh, workshops. We have a lot of materials. One of our artisans was able to build a huge market, uh, represent all Palmyra and the monuments and the destroyed monuments, and all with this market that uh, Ali produced, we want to make a uh, traveling exhibition in different cities in Europe. So now all of these materials that we have from Palmyra before the conflict, we want to show them again to show how Palmyra was before the destruction. An artist, a Dutch artist also, he, he did recently a lot of work of Palmyra, Theo de Fighter, and he was very kind to collaborate with us in this exhibition. So he will give us a lot of paintings that he did recently about the destruction of Palmyra to put in this exhibition. It's not easy. Always we need to find funding. But again, with the people of Palmyra, I am sure that we really will be able to uh, do all of these uh, activities. So thank you very much. And I am ready for uh, your questions. Thank you, Esperza. You are such an ambitious and visionary person, all of the activities that you've lined up, it takes my breath away.
to think of, of how you can accomplish all of this, you and your partner, Hassan, who we're so glad you're here. So among the questions, uh, there have been several questions about uh, you know, regarding interest in rebuilding some of the buildings. And there are also questions about the people. You've raised both of these issues very pointedly. Let me start with a couple of questions about buildings and then we'll move to the people. So uh, from Dr. David Lesh, uh, the Russians took an immediate interest in helping rebuild some of Palmyra following the expulsion of Daesh or ISIS. Has their help continued? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, also, this was used for uh, geopolitical reasons, you know? I mean, uh, even the Russian, uh, I mean, they arrived to Palmyra. I mean, they helped uh, to kick out uh, uh, Daesh from uh, Palmyra. But in the end, you know, we have all of this uh, memory of a uh, uh, Putin, senior Putin, talking with Valery Kirilyev, which is a very famous Russian composer, came from St. Petersburg with a symphony, and they did a huge, big symphony in the uh, Roman theater of Palmyra. Even Tinior Putin at this time, when they kicked out Daesh, used Palmyra for his uh, image, you know? We are, also, who are... It also would help Palmyra, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it bring attention to the people and to the destruction and the need for assistance, <laughs> even if it had political overtones? Yeah, but again, I mean, uh, I mean, the Russian, I mean, they didn't work in Palmyra and they don't have really the technical expertise to uh, restore Palmyra. I mean, they, they're trying, they did some kind of uh, missions to Palmyra, but who worked in Palmyra during all of this, uh, 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 maybe 80 years, are like Europeans, French, Italian, Polish, uh, even Japanese, uh, uh, German, you know, uh, Danish, uh, uh, Swiss. So uh, all of those uh, countries, they were able to do a lot of excavation missions, uh, even restoration, even. So, I mean, uh, Russia role in Palmyra, I mean, it's, it seems that they won't to uh, 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 to to work, uh, we now even what was happened with the Ukrainian uh, war uh, actually uh, it will be very difficult that Russia give money to restore Palmyra, you know, because with the, with what happened in the Ukrainian war, it was really very bad for Syria. And Syria is not more in the priorities of international community to, to help. I mean, all the attention now went to uh, Ukraine. One of our guests here, Dr. Sabrina, said, um, is Alex Hopkins, it seems that not all of Palmyra was destroyed. She wonders, why do you think parts of it were spared when more destruction could have taken place? What was destroyed was, you know, very important uh, uh, buildings, the Temple of Pal, the Temple of Pal Shamin, uh, the Tripolion of Palmyra, uh, several tombs, important tombs as well. I mean, I mean, it's effectively it was destroyed. Yeah, I mean, a lot of uh, uh, important buildings, you know, which are also representing, you know, uh, uh, the architecture of Palmyra. I mean. Uh, uh, Baal Shamin and the, the Bell uh, uh, temples are really like, you know, uh, even the uh, Tripolion and even uh, the Ark of Triumph of Palmyra, the Ark of Triumph, you know. So all of those buildings are really the main buildings, you know. It's still some uh, places were not destroyed. But uh, as I told you, so Daesh, when they choose those buildings, they really wanted to promote, you know, this or their publicity and they are very bad. And those buildings were, you know, they didn't go to another, like, small buildings, you know. They used the main buildings. And uh, uh, I cannot say how much is a, 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 a percentage of subtraction. I mean, it could be maybe 40%, it could be 30%, but we still really, I mean, need to do a lot of studies and missions. And because of also 
what we have, especially the sanctions to the Syrian uh, uh, government, and which is some, something very bad, I, actually, because uh, uh, here it is as well, you know, it should be neutral. And the Syrian uh, authorities of uh, cultural heritage, they don't really, they lack funding, they, they need support. And uh, we, unfortunately, the international community, the mixed, you know, uh, 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 politics with uh, heritage production. And this is really uh, a big problem that we are suffering in different countries where there are conflicts that always, you know, we should make heritage neutral. Heritage is for the people and uh, uh, we should care about the people. In the conflict, heritage should be considered, you know, as a, a, a neutral uh, element in which the international community also should support uh, the countries who are suffering of the destruction of uh, cultural heritage. You know, I was in the news media, Isper, for 20 years before I moved into this nonprofit position. And I understand the urge to cover the dramatic destruction of important sites. I also understand how important it is to talk with the people and see how, you know, the wounds to the, to the human being. What's your recommendation on how to impact or how to get the news media attention to cover the people uh, as well as the the instances of destruction of, of artifact because we as reporters are human too and we need somebody to draw our attention away from the big pictures even in this conversation a lot of the questions are about the artifacts and the monuments and the heritage the built heritage rather than the people we have some questions about people i'm going to get to in a moment, but please, what could anyone have done to bring the news media attention to the people as well as to the destruction of the heritage? Yeah, I mean, this is something we are now uh, observing, you know. <laughs> I mean, with the Ukrainian uh, war, you can see how the media just changed uh, their, uh, uh, its attention. Yes. With Ukraine, it's all about the people, isn't it? Uh, and and actually, you see how Ukrainian war, for example, is really cutting a lot of attention of the uh, Syrian conflict, of uh, of the Afghan conflict, of other conflicts. So, uh, 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 I mean, when Daesh was in Palmyra in 2015, you can see how uh, all the attention was to Daesh. Very dramatic. Uh, 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 so what, what I think it's important that the journalist and uh, 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 even the uh, uh, experts on heritage and the organization who are working on heritage production during conflict, they should really uh, be very close to the journalist and the journalists, they should have kind of uh, a mission as well to con talk about uh, about this kind of things, you know, and 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 uh, in general, actually, the attention always go now. If you see in Ukraine, a lot of attention was uh, also uh, done about the protection of heritage monuments in Ukraine, and uh, about how also the Russians they use heritage to attack the Ukrainian identity. Uh, so we really need to, uh, uh, especially when the projects will come back to Palmyra, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully soon, the restructuring of Palmyra, we need really to raise these uh, uh, issues, how we should take uh, care of the voice of the people. We cannot really start to uh, uh, rebuild the uh, archaeological and the historic buildings if the people they don't have uh, uh, their uh, basic infrastructures. So the people before, uh, because we know that the big uh, 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 organization with a huge funding, they will come to Palmyra with millions and millions in the future, hopefully. But before doing that, it's very important, very, very important to uh, establish the basic infrastructure for the people to come back, you so, know, electricity, uh, water, and the media should talk about that and about okay. the people. That's fair. Robert Ronis is curious to know who who are the people of Palmyra? Are these uh, Bedouin tribes? Are they city folk? Are they farmers? Who who are the people that eighty thousand number that you shared? I mean, Palmyra. Uh, has different uh, uh, groups. So 
the majority of the people are uh, coming from tribes. So they are tribes. They are people who immigrated because of uh, work to Palmyra because close to Palmyra, there are several like, you know, uh, uh, gas uh, 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 regions where uh, uh, Syrian uh, Syria produce oh, gas, so uh, 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 so there are people who also uh, came to Palmyra because of uh, of their work. So, okay, so uh, engineers and uh, uh, my colleague uh, Hassan Ali is doing now uh, uh, several publication about uh, about the locals, you know, uh, and about the oral history of the uh, Palmyrian. So uh, uh, I mean. Uh, with these studies that Ali is, uh, Hassan uh, doing, is uh, trying to identify as well more in details about the, the people of Palmyra. Uh, I mean, I am not personally from Palmyra, but I, I was uh, uh, working as a tourist guide. I, I can I, I know from you know from my people there that the Palmyrian community or society is very variant. So there could be tribes, there could be immigrants from other places in uh, uh, in, uh, in Syria. So, uh, but yeah, as I told you, they are, uh, we know that the, uh, the city and the, no the city in Arabic, we call it uh, Tadmor, which is before, 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 uh, uh, it was the village of Palmyra, before being a small city, was in the walls of the Temple of Pell. So all the uh, uh, in the walls of the Temple of Pell was a small uh, 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 village. In uh, 1930s, uh, 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 in 1930s, so the Syria at this time was uh, under the occupation of the French mandate. So they said we need to move Syria, uh, the village to outside the temple. So uh, so. So the city became like a city, like in the last 40 years, before it was a small village. Somewhat like the government of Jordan moved people uh, who lived in Petra out of, outside of the city itself. We have a question here from Diego de Soto. Would you please tell us the best ways um, to increase self-esteem of the Palmarine people, given what they've been through? Uh, uh, supporting them through, uh, through you know, uh, sharing as well their voice on the rebuilding of of the city. So uh, through our Balmerian Voices Initiative, we are trying as well to identify people who are with uh, university degrees, so uh, uh, archaeologists, architects, engineers. So the idea as well within the community to create these networks in which when the uh, uh, people will come back. So we have like a database about the people. So those people, they can be uh, 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 continue to uh, on the process of the reconstruction. So the idea also to get benefits. So all the project of uh, uh, reconstruction of the city should be a, a important resource of giving a future uh, jobs to the people in, in Palmyra. And some of your online shops might be helpful with regard to the developing the crafts and creating product for people. Uh, Zaina asks, um, regarding the online shop, who is making the products and where, and is shipping to Europe possible? It's very easy. So the shop, the people that do the products, we put them in the shop and then they ship, we ship them to Spain from Turkey. So all the handicrafts are based in, in Turkey. So uh, from Turkey, they came to Spain and from Spain, we try uh, 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 to ship them to where the people ask to uh, to buy them. So, uh, uh, so it's like that, you know, sometimes it's still, I mean, we learned because it's really not, not easy because there are a lot of costs of shipping them, and uh, sometimes uh, some of them they are destroyed on the uh, on the road. So now we are uh, trying, you know, to uh, 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 to have as much as possible products, and also to get more funding in order to pay the handicrafts in order to produce more products. So it's a cycle there. Exactly. It's like, so it's a cycle, but you've got to get on that cycle and get it working. Yeah, 
So, I mean, for our attendees, they can see the shop and, uh, and if they like, we will be very happy to uh, uh, give them uh, products from Palmyra. I think there is actually a lot of interest in that. We've had a couple of programs um, where we've uh, showcased artists from Syria and from Bethlehem and, um, and other locations. Uh, there's a, a desire among the international population for authentic items, um, authentic items that actually, when we purchase them, they make a difference. Our, our, our purchasing power can make a difference. Is there a final lesson you'd like us to take away uh, from our conversation today? What is, what is the essence that you would like our audience to leave with? Something hopeful because you always speak about hope. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, actually, um, when we talk about heritage, we talk about the people and heritage is about the people. So uh, we should always consider that working on heritage and to try to protect heritage is try to help people. And uh, this is what we learned, you know, so we should really work for the people and with the people in order to uh, uh, support them during conflicts and uh, uh, heritage uh, during or, or pro the protection of heritage is also uh, something very very important for the people we cannot really uh, 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 leave the people who don't have any uh, memories, any heritage, they will be lost in their uh, in the future. So, uh, uh, so heritage is a need like a humanitarian aid. So we need really to consider that that uh, 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 people and their heritage is uh, important to be uh, protected and uh, 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 maintained for the future uh, generations. For all of our future. Dr. Isper Sabrine, thank you so much for your presentation, for waking us up to this important issue and for pointing out how important the people are that, uh, that are impacted alongside the destruction of antiquities and heritage. A very, very important lesson for us. We've put the websites for Her uh, Heritage for Peace and Palmarine Voices into our chat. We hope that you will consider being generous with this important project and with the work that's being done, uh, very important work that's being done by our colleague, Dr. Sabrine. The Abraham Path Initiative is also a not-for-profit. We're based in the United States and our online programs are part of our education and outreach uh, to introduce people and cultures from the Middle East to a growing global audience. Right now, we are seeking resources to sustain trail development and cultural heritage preservation in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. Now's the time because our board of directors will match your investment dollar for dollar. $25 becomes $50. $50 becomes $100. $100 becomes $200. Please go to our website, www.abrahampath.org, and click donate. Deep gratitude to our many supporters who are watching and participating today in our program. We couldn't do this without you. I'm Anissa Mehdi. For all of us at the Abraham Path Initiative, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll leave you with images of some of the many historic sites in the region, which have you visited. Mm -hmm.